uh, better. Yeah, at, at the end of the day, those are both geeks having fun and marketing. Yeah, well, Apple's using uh, cats, I suppose. They, uh, but they've always been kind of cool. Well, the cats in general have been symbol of, especially when you go up to lion. And, have you uh, ever seen a cat? Well, well, it's a whole family of animals. Uh, uh, okay, but have you seen what cats act like and what cats do? And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> again, no, no, no. part of the reason I like, I, I know I'm a dog person. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, canines, please, you know. Well, but they <laughs> develop from being a, kind of a spoiled cat. You know, Android, and uh, he's been attacked by Apple now. And, and the impression I get of them, Apple, the, the ones that have come to my site and flame me and defame me and all kinds of stuff. They kind of match the stereotype of like, you know, they become lions now. You know, they, they grew some teeth, they grew some claws, and now they kind of really go after it. And so, mm, that's not exactly a small cat anymore. So I'm, it's, I'm a bit worried about what I say. And, and you saw what happened to Storm when we, we spoke about it in the previous uh, episode as well. I mean, that's still going on. I'm seeing all the journalists and what they say. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's truly interesting because you, you kind of see who... Uh, why they don't like Stallman and why what they say about them, and they kind of saying, yeah, it's, I know, I know the type, I know, I know I, why. I, they I, I, I could make a comment equating talking ill of Apple to a statement one of the Beatles made, and I'm going to leave it at that because if I go any further than that, I'm going down a road we really don't want to go down. <laughs> Uh, it, it is quite bizarre. I mean, we, we touched on this last episode, so there's uh, uh, probably no point in dwelling on it, but it is quite bizarre how still, even now, that it's being dwelled upon about uh, one person's views. And uh, it, it's very interesting to watch it develop as, over a period of days, uh, in, interpretations of what's been said are twisted and misinterpreted and then passed on. And then by the time you see the next article that comes out about what, what Richard Solman has said about Steve Jobs, it's completely different to what the original thing actually or, was. It's, or it's, it's a been, quote of somebody he disagrees yeah. with, which is like the mayor of the thing. He's like, hold on, I said, he didn't say that. He gave it as an example of a tasteless the, remark. The most the, interesting, but the most interesting thing about it is, is that it's one of these, uh, one of these subjects, if I know, I'd I don't like using that term for this particular type of uh, debate that some people have engaged in, but it's one of those subjects where as a Linux user and maybe a free and open source advocate, you cannot win the argument. Because if you agree with what uh, Mr. Stallman said, then the same people that are claiming uh, Mr. Stallman is cheating Steve Jobs and saying X, Y, and Z and implying X, Y, Z, you'll be labelled with the same thing. Conversely, if you say, well, I don't agree with with Richard Solman, then they'll say, ah, oh, we've got a Linux user here who doesn't agree with... Um, with exactly, it's a lose-lose. Yeah. Lose. And you can't win. And it's, it's just not worth And then, again, if you don't respond at all, oh, you've got nothing to say, so you must know we're right. And again, it gets used again. And it's fascinating to watch the tricks and tactics used by people who are determined to uh, to cheapen somebody. I think and there is a range of... Because uh, I've seen people who disagree with Stallman, and I'm fine with them, mm. because they weren't distorting what he said. No. But I'm, I, but there the, there is the extreme. There are those who say things worse than he did. Like I'm glad the person's dead. Mm. Like you know he deserved it. And, and I have one one person in the IRC channel on Tech Right is saying that. And I, I don't have anything to do with that. That's his opinion. Uh, and then you have the other extreme, which is like you know Stone is disgusting. And he's like you know, some people like try to associate him with, with like pedophilia and stuff, which by twisting his words. Which obviously, if you look more carefully, you kind of understand what was going on. So, and, again, so, uh, and again, it's one of those it's, it's one of those uh, debates that people want to engage Linux users in, where you just can't win. And it's probably best that you don't make a remark at all, because whatever you say will be held against you. Yeah, uh, yeah. What, what, what's that old phrase? Best to be si- best to be thought a fool and silent rather than open your mouth and remove I'm, the doubt or something. I mean, I, I've I've, 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 watched, I've been watching this um, Richard Stallman interpretation. Uh, so popular being played out on a, on a Usenet uh, news group. And um, all I'll say is this, is people have interpretations of what other people say on the, on the net, and that's fine. If if somebody interprets somebody's uh, views and opinions as being watered on criminal, then that person who interprets those views as being criminal should have a moral responsibility to take the immediate steps of reporting it to the authorities themselves. What they shouldn't do is start interrogating other people as to what their views are on that person's uh, statements. If 
somebody believes that anybody on the net has said something which could be construed as being maybe dubious, then it is their moral responsibility to report the matter themselves and not to drag other people in. So while we have this debate raging on and people are bringing up all this sort of stuff that Mr. Stallman might have said or how it could be interpreted, at the end of the day, if they truly believe what they're saying, then they have the responsibility to take necessary steps to bring it to the attention of the relevant authorities and not drag it up in a, in a, in a forum or uh, anywhere else in a, in a public venue. Um, that's uh, my well, there is the... Uh, I, I'm yeah. a fan of debate, so I'm not sure I agree with that. Well, but I, I prefer, a, to me, a debate yeah, is a the debate, actual yeah. facts, not... Uh, yeah. well, I, I've interpreted this interpretation of this interpretation to mean what I want it to mean. That's this, not this a debate. Is, yeah. That's I want... I want to have an opinion and cram it and say it. <laughs> it's, it's a very different, there's a very different, um, very different stance with a debate to an allegation of possible criminality, um, where the person who it involves isn't present in the channel or the forum yeah. to, to, to answer back. And there uh, is no proof of burden to actually prove what the allegation is. So a person can make a very weak claim, which would never be, re which, which the person would never report because he knows it's just about to be yes. Uh, and then you can say all kinds of stuff without having any, actually any burden to, and then it just becomes a case of like defamation or whatever. So, and this happens a lot on a lot of usually by anonymous people, They're not using their names on the internet because it's just very easy to do that. Uh, but they will not actually take action if they see, if they call a person uh, like a uh, I don't know something like a troll or, or maybe they they accuse a person of doing something legal. It's very easy to say to use innuendo to uh, imply the person is doing something legal, but the person won't actually do anything about it to report the thing because he knows that there is no strong claim there. So uh, it's, it's mean, easy to use words to uh, imply something without actually having to stand behind your argument. But I mean, this goes this goes on in every forum, probably on it on every site, and, and it's, it's something that will never change. It's certainly not unique to. Uh, Free software, or Mr. Stallman, or Steve Jobs, or anybody else. And I think whatever viewpoint or topic's been discussed, there's always going to be something very similar to this. Uh, like I said, I think it's counterproductive. I don't think in a lot of the cases I've seen, I know we're we're talking about one particular, but in a lot of cases I've seen, I don't think there's any malicious intent in respect of they're just defaming for the mere fun of it. Uh, but having said that, conversely, I think there is there no, is a bit no, of trolling for tension. Yeah. I think to an extent I would almost accuse that. Uh, in some cases, I think Stallman likes to make certain remarks because he knows it gets him some attention. And by the way, this whole controversy recently with Stallman, it's not, a very, it's not as bad as you th might think it is for Stallman because he's just got a lot of publicity uh, and he got a lot of people who weren't even aware of who he was to actually know what he's doing, to actually go to his website. Uh, from that point of view, was actually uh, getting the reaction which may be expected in some ways. Uh, in the very same way, like... I, I sometimes joke with you personally uh, uh, about people who are trying to hackle our show and to, to say negative things about our show. What they actually do is they encourage people to listen to the show, and you know it's it's not really damaging to us. Like if somebody listens to the show, you know they cannot really troll the show. It's it's kind of a one way one one way thing. You know they listen to the show. What can they do? It's not like a person in the audience throwing chickens at you. So so in, in some ways all they do is just bring more people to your show. Uh, that that's not working to their advantage. And I mean, a few a few hours ago, I received an email um, addressed to uh, Bytes Media, and, and uh, basically one of the professors in Boston College he, uh, is going to use uh, parts of the uh, of, of our content and stuff. They asked for permissions from the copyrights point of view. I say, sure, you know, just use whatever you want. But they're going to use it in books and stuff. So. That's that. That's pretty gratifying. Just provide and, a citation. <laughs> well, I just say it would be nice to have an attribution, but you like, don't have to. But uh, in, in in some ways, the reason people will like go to Stolman site, the Stolman.org now, just about every person linked to his site or quoted the thing in full. And Stolman has got in his site. It's called Political Blog, so it's not got nothing to do with software. What he has to do with software, he puts in GNU.org or in FSF. So, so I mean, people will go to his site to explore his other opinions, and if he had to be a bit shocking about jobs or something, fine. But he, he, he didn't say anything legal, you know. Uh, the question is, was it controversial? Was it a bit strong? And you know, he, maybe he, he wasn't as strong as say something like Christopher Hitchens, you know, people with a bigger mouth and more daring uh, remark about remarks about about things. So. Uh, from his point of view, I'm not too worried about the FSF or about Stolman up to this case. I think it's just an opportunity for them to uh, 
to uh, get their message across. It's Jobs was not a person whose uh, uh, capacity to help the FSF was to be appreciated, even though he was using as in exploiting free software. Well, I mean, to be fair, I, I haven't read. I, mean, I know there's been a, a few uh, a few allegations and a few attacks on Mr. Solomon and what he said and how it's been interpreted or how people have interpreted. But I certainly have made a point of not actually reading what Mr.